How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is my channel all about horror movies. If you like monsters, slashers, zombies, pretty much anything that'll cut you up, this is the channel for you. I'm really working hard to get to 100,000 subscribers, so whether you're new here or you've been here for a while, help me out and hit the subscription button and set your notifications to all. And do me an extra favor and make sure if you're already subscribed that your notifications are set to all and not personalized. The personalized ones don't work for most people, so I just wanted to put that little PSA out there. I just got back from the gym, I took a shower, I was on my phone and I saw this article from Bloody Disgusting pop up that was talking about the new Halloween from Miramax. A lot of people were thinking that we were going to be having to wait a long time to see more Michael Myers, but if this interview is accurate to what's actually going to happen, then I think it's going to be happening a lot sooner than most people thought. So this interview is coming from Mark Helwig, who's the head at Miramax. I think Miramax's CEO left right before they picked up the Halloween rights, so I don't know if this guy kind of replaced him or what, but based on what he's saying about Halloween, it seems like he's a pretty good guy to be shepherding the franchise going forward, at least from the business side of things. This interview was on Deadline, and what he said to them is, the foundation of it is the original film, the John Carpenter movie, the characters of that film, and perhaps a group of characters that we haven't really focused on that much in recent film versions or even in a number of them. This interview is broken up into three chunks. I'm gonna go through them chunk by chunk. And yeah, I'm, I'm liking exactly what I'm hearing here. I think with Halloween, even though we just got a creative reboot, the first movie is so good at setting things up that every single Halloween property going forward should just use that as the building blocks. I understand that people want something that follows up on Halloween 4 or continues on with Halloween 6 and all the stuff that introduced, but you gotta consider that even those are using the building blocks that were like, or at least they're using the foundation that was built by the original movie. So if they're going off of anything, the fact that they're already saying we're using the original movie as the foundation, that's once again, exactly what I wanna hear. I'm curious if they'll do the Halloween 2018 thing and eliminate Halloween 2. I understand why people don't like that because unlike me, I guess, people are crazy and they like the sisters plot line. I hate that plot line so much because when I was a kid and I saw this movie, in the first movie, Michael Myers was like indiscriminately killing anyone. He went after Lori and her friends because they kind of taunted him outside the high school. He said, all right, I'm picking you. I'm going after you. I'm going to murder you and all of your friends and boyfriends tonight. There's no rhyme or reason behind it other than that. It's almost like the strangers, but not as random as the strangers. Then when he introduced Halloween 2, they throw in this plot line that like Lori is his long lost sister. That's a logic leap like of an extreme degree in my opinion. And the fact that he's going after his family members pretty much exclusively or people in their orbit from that movie onward kind of made him less scary to me, right? Like Laurie Strode isn't a real person, but like Michael Myers kind of transcends movies. It's something you could be scared of as a kid. So you want to have a reason for him to go after people for no reason, right? He shows up on Halloween night in a small Midwestern town and he might be out there. So you shouldn't stay out trick or treating past dark. You know what I'm saying? But I do love the hospital sequence in Halloween 2. I love the way that movie shot. I love a lot of the kills. Like when Michael Myers comes out of the shadows and uses the air-filled syringe, it's awesome. It's just, just like really cool moments in that movie. But the coolest thing, like I said way back when Halloween 2018's first plot details came out and I did that very first video on it, that movie still exists. You can watch it whenever you want. There's plenty of timelines within the Halloween universe. So like, I don't think they need to pack in tons and tons of lore because as we saw with Halloween 2018, the highest grossing Halloween movie in the entire franchise, when you simplify things, you bring them back to basics, that's what gets people in the theater. Also, I just don't like overcomplicated slasher movies. I don't really care when there's a backstory like this person was abused as a child or whatever. I don't need to feel empathy or sympathy for a slasher villain. They need to be a villain. I don't need this other side of the coin where society failed them and that's why they ended up being the killer that they are. I like movies like Halloween, The Stranger, and all that. Like I'd argue that most killers in slasher movies are impacted extremely negatively when you flesh out their backstory too much. Also, I think it's funny that he says we're gonna focus on characters that haven't shown up in the franchise recently. I don't know who that could mean because as we all know, Halloween Kills brought back pretty much every single side character from the original movie and murdered most of them. The only one that lived through it is Lindsay Wallace and uh, maybe a couple of others. I can't really remember at this point because it's been a little bit, but there was a pretty big body count of original characters like 
Sheriff Barker and Marion Crane. I mean, the list goes on and on. Like Tommy Doyle, even. I think Lonnie too and Lonnie's son. Like there's so many characters who die from the original movie that they don't really have this big Rolodex of people that they could focus on from the original movie. So what I would like to see them do with that little jumping off point that they've kind of created there is work in some of the Halloween spirit, right? Like we saw a lot of Halloween 3 influencing the last three Halloween movies, right? Like you saw the kids in the masks in Halloween 2018. They showed up again in Halloween Kills. And then in Halloween Ends, you even had the title sequence basically ripped straight out of Halloween 3. I think they need to lean a little bit harder into that. And especially the stuff that shows up in Halloween 2, like Michael writing Sawin on the chalkboard and things like that. Like if you're going to give him any backstory as to why he's murdering people, I think the best way to go is to incorporate the actual idea of Halloween, the day, the reason we all love horror movies. At least if you're watching this channel, I would think that's true. Anyway, the next chunk is he says it's a creative reset completely and going back to the original film as opposed to spinning out of any of the more recent film adaptations. That, once again, is very smart, right? Like, I hope they get a creative team who can come up with a mask that's as good as the ones that we had in the last three movies. Like, honestly, my dream would be for Christopher Nelson to come back. He's been very vocal on, like, the thing with two heads and Instagram and everything that he doesn't really want to come back to the franchise because it was so much work working with Blumhouse and everything like that. But but I feel like everyone has a price, right? Like if they're doing this the right way, they're giving it a little bit more money, like maybe the same budget as Halloween ends up front. They're saying, hey man, we're not gonna do these crazy shoots where we pack it into a very short time period. We're not gonna shoot in the dead of winter. We're not gonna make you travel all that much. There's a way to get that creative team back to work on the costume. And I think they couldn't really do much better than that. Like honestly, if someone's out there who could make a better mask than the team that Christopher Nelson had with Vincent Van Dyke, I've never heard of them and I wanna meet them because that, that work is unbeatable to me. Obviously, I'm biased. I love that series. It launched my YouTube channel. And I, I just think with that bias taken into account that that mask trilogy is the best of the entire franchise, bar none, except for the first movie, obviously. Like even the flashback mask was incredible. Like they made subtle changes to it that made it a little bit meaner. And I loved how it turned out. Again, I think a creative reset is the smartest way to go. Like reintroduce the world, use the first movie, say you remember the story, you just got it recap to you in the last three movies but this time we're doing things a little bit different because of course there's a tv show involved and that's kind of where you can get into the new characters i've pitched this in a couple of videos before but i would love it if this tv show was focused on what happens in between halloweens like how the town prepares knowing that michael might show up on a halloween night like what they go through i don't think it needs to be anywhere near as melodramatic as we got in halloween kills or especially in halloween ends all the goofy stuff like even Evil dies tonight that's that can't be charm worked in Halloween kills for me at least but I don't need to see it again because we just saw it I want to see this town gripped by fear of Halloween I don't need it to be trauma or like you know these buzzwords that are thrown around all the time that everyone loves using on Twitter where it feels like you know this word gets thrown out and then it's all you see for like months and months and months I don't need it at that level but I want to see a town that has this looming fear of Halloween and what shows up on Halloween they want to be I want them to be scared that their kids could die at the hands of Michael Myers, right? Like, even though Michael doesn't traditionally kill kids, he's only killed a couple, he skips the baby in Halloween 2018. I know I saw all the hate comments on Happy Halloween. I thought it was sweet. If he's going around murdering people, people get a little bit irrational when they're scared. So like, obviously if you're a parent and you have a kid and people are being murdered every Halloween, you're not gonna let your kid go trick or treating. They could also introduce a faction of people who are like, we can't let this force, this evil kind of take us over. We gotta just live life as normal. And if he shows up, we got to fight back. There's a lot of different approaches you could do other than the one single approach that they took in Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, which was a verging on corny and a little dramatic and became corny and dramatic by Halloween Ends. But that kind of brings us to the best part of the interview, which kind of tells us that we're going to see whatever they're working on very soon. He specifically says, we're on the fast track. It's a big priority for us. We've had lots of exciting conversations in recent months with a number of really talented people. And I think we'll have a pretty good idea of what we're going to be doing very soon. We're hoping to lock down the creative team very soon. So all of you David Gordon Green and Danny McBride haters, you can rejoice now that you know neither of them are coming back for this. They're going for a whole new creative team. And just after the last decade of revival sequels and requels and new movies and old franchises, I hope they look towards something like Top Gun Maverick as a great example of how to do that right and don't just focus on what they already did in the last three movies. I think if you bring back Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode, that's a mistake 
stake. She's been done to death. She got her ending. She said she's not coming back, but she said that a million times. Like the most I want to see of Laurie Strode is old footage from old movies. Like the original movie, show flashbacks or whatever, but focus on a new cast of characters that are like shepherded by someone like Dr. Loomis maybe, or a different character that people don't feel so like uh, divisive over. You know what I'm saying? Like people are still a little bit hot on Laurie Strode in a bad way. So I don't think bringing her back would be the smartest move. And we just got three movies with her. So I think that story is a little bit played out at this point. Also, I, I got to think about how to word this. I don't want someone coming in here who's going to like make their own sandbox, like take all these characters and just make a completely new thing with them. I don't want that at all. I want you to enter the world of John Carpenter's Halloween and try to make decisions that John Carpenter would make at the very most. Like I don't need these left field things like Michael getting expanded backstory that gives him trauma and like a whole backstory of just depression and everything. I just don't want to see their take on Halloween. I want more Halloween as it was back in the day, right? Like very simple, very slasher heavy, kill focused, have a group of characters who are kind of like at a disadvantage. I mean, everyone's at a disadvantage to Michael Myers, but you know what I'm saying? Like they're not necessarily the most equipped people. I don't need a person who's coming in and basically being Ash from Evil Dead 2, right? Like I want someone who's an everyman fighting back against something that's seemingly unkillable. And for at least the first movie or two, he should be unkillable. So knowing that they're already getting the creative team together, they're working on a slasher movie. Traditionally, they have lower budgets. You want to make sure you get these things done as efficiently as possible. Maybe not again as efficient as the Blumhouse movies because we're seeing just over and over and over again that that formula is starting to break down. I think we'll probably see this movie by the end of next year. I think the TV show should come after and most likely will come after because introducing a movie's world with a TV show it traditionally like in history never works, right? You're getting a much smaller audience out the gate and then you also alienate people who feel like they have to watch the show to understand what's going on in the movie that don't want to. I want it to be movie, then show, then movie, then new season of the show, then movie, new season of the show, third movie, right? Like you do it that way and make the show supplementary for people who want more out of that world, but don't necessarily make it essential. I just watched Gen V, the show that's like a spinoff of The Boys. I kind of was like uh, apathetic about it at first. I was like, man, this is just becoming exactly what that show was created to like make fun of, right? Where it's like there's spinoffs. You have to watch the spinoffs to understand what's going on in season three of The Boys. And like, honestly, I like the show. I'd, I'd give it like an eight out of 10. I thought it was really good. The only moment that I think is going to play into season three is like a throwaway stinger from Homelander at the end of the series. Like you could have watched that on YouTube. And that's about the exact level that I would want for a Halloween show that also lives in the same world as the movies, right? Like make it supplementary with tidbits that kind of flesh out the lore a little bit, but don't give you anything so essential that you absolutely have to watch this show on Peacock to understand what's going on in the movie. So yeah, that's all I've got for you today on this new Halloween news. Obviously, I'm super excited. I love talking about Halloween and I thought there was going to be a lot longer of a wait for new content. I'm sure there's going to be a range of opinions on this. Like a lot of YouTubers make their money just shitting on anything related to Halloween these days, but that's not me. You know, I'm a huge franchise fan. I'm a borderline fanboy. And if you want positive coverage on Halloween, unless they do something bad, like I'm not going to not criticize them, but for the most part, I'm excited about it. And I think you should be too. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, set your notifications to all if you haven't already. Have a great weekend and shape on.